This is Tom Bernanke and today I'm going over the top six foods that cause inflammation. So this means heart disease, diabetes, joint pain, everything. If you are eating these top six foods, we're gonna get you to stop. And as a bonus, watch towards the end because I'm gonna show you the one and possibly two best foods to counteract these. And we're starting right now. Inflammation can be good for the body. So if you get a disease, your inflammation will attack it. If you have a wound, it starts with an inflammatory process. But what we're talking about is heart disease. Uh, you know, cholesterol in your blood vessels, lung diseases, chronic joint pain, so knee, hip, foot pain. Hey, as a podiatrist, I deal with this every day. Your immune cells should normally attack bacteria, and you're gonna see this in this graphic, but in autoimmune conditions, such as high inflammation, they actually attack your body, your cells. They lead to chronic joint pain, chronic pain, diseases, like different types of osteoarthritis. So we wanna stop that. We're gonna do a countdown from the pretty dangerous to the most dangerous. So number six is processed meats. So processed meats, these are ones like ham, sausage, hot dogs, pepperoni, beef jerky, deli meats, including roast beef and turkey. Now, these are ones performed by smoking or salting, curing, adding chemical preservatives. This can increase your risk of cancer. So they contain something called advanced glycosylation end products, known as AGEs. So these are dangerous because studies have shown that these can contribute to creating inflammation in your body. And specifically, this leads to inflammation, joint pain, pot potentially uh, blood flow problems, but specifically the major one is colon cancer. So processed meats are a big one. Number five in our list is excessive alcohol. Now listen, before you shut this video off, Alcohol can be good for you. So there's things like the Mediterranean diet where one or two glasses of wine per day is reasonable. But we're talking like when you're slamming back the beers. The studied risk levels are two drinks per day maximum for women and three per day for men. That's 10 total drinks maximum for ladies per week and 15 drinks maximum for men per week. You know, when you're doing like a half pack a day, when, when it destroy, starts destroying your life, this can lead to something called leaky gut. So with leaky gut, you develop inflammatory bacteria, you're not digesting things properly, you can develop something called inflammatory bowel disease, so you have diarrhea, constipation, so when you wake up the next day and you have diarrhea in the morning, that's potentially leaky gut syndrome. There is immune markers called C-reactive protein. And in studies, people who drink a lot of alcohol, this is elevated. This is a lot of inflammation. And specifically, this could also lead to liver problems. But, you know, we're focusing on inflammation here. Number four in the countdown is refined carbs. This is your breads, your flours, your cookies, you know, uh, your cupcakes, all that dough that you get in there. These are called refined carbs. So what this means is there's good carbs, and there's bad carbs. So good carbs are things like fiber. And fiber, your body does not digest. It keeps you regular, it keeps you pooping well, it prevents hemorrhoids, it keeps your stomach bacteria behaving very well. Whereas low glycemic index foods, which are the ones I just mentioned, they have basically high levels of sugar that are easily processed. This leads to an upset in your GI bacteria it leads to high inflammation. So people already know breads aren't the best for you, but it's because they're refined sugars. They take out that fiber. Now there are fortified breads with increased fiber, but overall, like realistically, if you eat something like an avocado, for the 11 grams of sugar that an avocado has, 10 are fiber and only one is an actual sugar. So that's a great ratio. Breads, even if they have like three grams out of 40, is that a great ratio? I'll let you kind of decide. Studies don't seem to think so. Vegetable oils and seed oils. So this is fried foods, you know, when you're pouring a lot of oil, the non-good oils into your frying pan and you're cooking up, you know, your French fries, your fried foods. What happens is these are called omega-6 fatty acid. My wife is a dietitian, so she always catches me, but these are the bad oils. Soybean oil, corn oil, cottonseed, sunflower oil, peanut oil, sesame oil, 
and rice bran oil. Avoid those. The good ones are olive, canola, flaxseed, avocado, walnut, sesame, grapeseed, sunflower. So most people should be able to get some canola oil and you should be in pretty good shape. In Western society, these have gone up dramatically. So there's a study that shows essentially uh, if you have a high ratio to omega-6 fatty acids, which are kind of the bad fat, to omega-3 fatty acids, which are kind of the good fats, which what they show is people who ate a lot of the bad fats, so a lot of vegetable oils and seed oils, if the ratio was like 20 to 1 of bad fats to good fats, people had a lot more inflammation, a lot more diseases. Whereas people who had omega-3 fat, in a one-to-one -one ratio, they were a lot healthier, they were doing well. So this is like, omega-3s come from like fish, like, uh, you know, salmon, um, like nuts, like vegetables um, can have a lot of this. So the more you focus on that, the less inflammation you will have. So omega-3 fatty acids usually come from fish, especially cold water fish like salmon, but it can also be converted from plants if you are a vegan. So a lot of plants can convert to it, but at a much lower ratio. The trick is supplementation. If you're low, you want to get a good supplement that's high in EPA and DHA. So you don't have to know what those mean, but the real trick is make sure most of that is made up of EPA and DHA because a lot of the cheap ones are not, and that's what cheats people of their money and supplement. Artificial trans fats. So artificial trans fats are different than dairy and meat. So there's trans fats in dairy and meat, but what happens is studies have shown that dairy and meat trans fats are not as bad and they don't cause as much inflammation as artificial. Now I could talk about the chemistry because uh, I'm a, a biochemistry major and a organic chemistry major at the same time, but it's basically where cis and trans come in. Your body is supposed to digest trans fats, but artificially ones create ones that your body cannot digest. But the ones in meats and dairy, your body can actually digest and break those down. So that's why trans fats are not all the same. And these are sometimes listed as partially hydrogenated oils. So foods that we're talking about are margarines, french fries, fried foods. So when you're pouring that oil, microwave popcorn is a big offender. You know, microwave popcorn, I used to eat it a lot until I found this out, but really bad in trans fats for most oily popcorn. Cakes, cookies, and pastries can do this as well. And we're down to number one, the most dangerous. So this is high fructose corn syrup. So this is probably one you might've been expecting. So high sugar, high fructose corn syrup. So sugar is about 50-50 glucose and fructose. So uh, high fructose corn syrup is about 45% glucose and 55% fructose. So this is cheap and easy to make stuff last on store shelves a long time because it's too unhealthy for bacteria to even eat. They put so much sugar in there that bacteria cannot live on this thing, but that's what we're putting in our stomach right now. That's why we're getting so much inflammation. So the big offenders here are sodas, uh, sugary drinks, juices, cupcakes, cakes, candies, um, you know, certain types of cereal, certain types of granola bar loaded with like vanilla on top. Basically anything that's packaged that can last forever. So I mentioned all those things, like cupcakes can last forever too. Like chocolate can last forever. All these things, studies have shown, it radically increases your risk of obesity, uh, inflammation, diabetes, joint pain, heart disease, uh, cholesterol in your blood vessels. There's a lot of studies where mice were fed sugar, they developed so many diseases very quickly. They developed so many cancers, so same kind of thing, sugar, leads to rapid uh, rates of cancer increase. Uh, you know, one of these studies says like three to one compared to the population, that's huge. They did a study where they compared soda with a lot of sugar compared to diet soda, compared to milk, compared to water, and only the regular soda with the sugar caused dramatic inflammation, it caused uric acid, which causes gout. As a foot doctor, I see this a lot. Patients come in with throbbing toes, aching, severe joint pain. So sodas loaded with sugar, can it's definitively proven at this point. And fructose is associated with heart diseases, fatty liver, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, heart disease, pretty much any cancer, anything you name, it is associated with. So it's critical to cut this stuff out. Now, 
I made a couple videos on no sugar, no carb um, foods. I list them below. These are the snacks I eat. And I think the real trick, and here's we're gonna get down to the tricks to counteract this now, is all these good no carb, no sugar foods, I pretty much don't stop myself from eating the sweets and the good stuff, but I stuff myself full of the healthy no carb stuff. So it fills up your stomach. So it's hard for me to resist the urge, but it's easy for me to pre-fill myself consciously. But two anti-inflammatory foods. My number one anti-inflammatory food, but I'm gonna start with the second one. Number two is omega-3 fatty acids. I kind of mentioned those. Omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory, it works great. But what I mentioned with uh, the fatty acid earlier, the omega-6, you need a ratio that's at least one to one. So you want more omega-3s than omega-6s. Now, the crappy part is a lot of supplements that I see at the store, they have like five times more omega-6s in the capsule than omega-3. So you're eating like a five to one ratio and that's not helping you. You want mostly what's called EPA and DHA. So when you look at your tablets, you want at least 50%, hopefully more, to be that good omega-3 fatty acid. Otherwise, in my opinion, they're just stealing your money. So be very aware of that. And my number one anti-inflammatory food is uh, curcumin, which is found in turmeric, which is a spice. So I do a lot of great videos about uh, turmeric. I think it's great. There's almost no risk. You could eat a lot. Um, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence. A lot of people say turmeric helps their joints dramatically. It can help with a lot of different stuff, heart, uh, you know, some Alzheimer's research, um, blood flow. So there's a lot of stuff on that. But guys, I really want you to do better. You can see how important all this food is. Share this with your friends, your relatives. Um, you know, I think it could really help them. Uh, subscribe and hit the like and we'll see you on the next one. We have guides for everything. Keep watching. We appreciate you and good luck.